Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, horror, mystery, and sci-fi film called Pandorum. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The Earth's resources have been rapidly depleting due to its large population. By 2153, the population has grown to 24.34 billion, making food and water even more scarce. That same year, the Paleo-17 space probe has reached the planet, Tennis. Project Elysium is launched in 2174 as nations start to fight over what remains of the world's resources. Soon, Elysium glides through space as its crew listens to a multilingual message from Earth, telling them, you're all that's left of us. Good luck, God bless, and Godspeed. Corporal Bauer gasps for air as he wakes up in panic inside his hypersleep pod. He breaks free from the harness supporting him and rips out all the tubes attached to him as he leaves the capsule. He checks the other pods for other crew members and sees that the pod for a crew member named Cooper is empty. Lieutenant Peyton, on the other hand, is still in his capsule, deep in hypersleep. As he gets dressed, he finds a picture of a woman on his locker and takes it. He tries unlocking the door to the bridge, but he fails, so he tries to wake Peyton by repeatedly hitting his pod with a metal rod. A sudden power surge on the ship soon causes Peyton's pod to open. When Peyton emerges, Bauer informs him that they are in the Elysium, but he can't find the other crew members. With no other people around, Bauer speculates that the flight computer awakened him. Due to their long slumber, the two men struggle to remember important details about their mission. Bauer recalls the training he went through, but he can't remember the objective. As they inspect the ship, they come across the door of the bridge. Bauer sees a few tools lying close to the door and asserts that someone else tried to open it manually. The two men reach the communications room and manage to activate the consoles. Peyton tries to contact other team members, but no one is answering. Bauer learns from the tattoo on his arm that they belong to Flight Team 5. When another power surge hits the ship, Peyton tells Bauer that they have to find a way to get to the bridge. Bauer climbs up the vent to look for another opening that will allow him to open the doors from the other side of the command center. Meanwhile, more power surges keep happening, each lasting longer than the last. Bauer figures out that the reactor needs to be reset to keep the power up and running. Peyton deduces that Bauer must be the ship's technical engineer from his knowledge about the reactor. As he crawls through the vents, the tubes around Bauer start to get tighter, making him feel claustrophobic. To calm him down, Peyton jokes that he had managed to open the door on his own. Bauer keeps going until he falls down an angled section of the vent. After activating a light stick, Bauer discovers Cooper's rotting corpse beside him. He struggles to free his hand from the tubes constricting him to unlock the shaft. He falls through the grate and finds himself in the storage room. Bauer uses a metal bar to pry open the door, but he loses communication with Peyton after getting in. While he is walking through the ship's corridor, he sees a woman trying to force a door open with a metal rod. However, she runs away as soon as she sees Bauer. He chases after her until he reaches another corridor where he sees someone standing a few feet away from him. Bauer tells the woman that he's part of the flight crew as he walks closer to her. However, when he shines the light on her face, he discovers that it's a dead body of a man hanging from a wire attached to the ceiling. The woman named Nadia suddenly emerges from hiding and kicks Bauer in the face. When he gets up, she knocks him to the ground and gets on top of him, pinning him down. While holding a knife to his neck, she takes away his supplies asks him to remove his shoes. However, she suddenly takes off when she hears screeching sounds across the corridor. As Bauer tries to run away, something pulls the hanging corpse to the floor above him. Bauer runs back to the storage room to hide. He takes a peek and sees a ghoulish creature holding a glowing spear looking for him. Unable to find Bauer, the monstrous hunter wails, prompting others to follow suit. While hiding in a vent, Peyton suddenly calls out to him on the radio. Bauer quickly shuts it off to prevent attracting the attention of the monsters. A hunter suddenly turns up next to him and tears the vent door open. He keeps himself quiet as the ghoul reaches into the vent and grabs Cooper's body. Bauer turns the radio back on and tells Peyton that creatures are running around the ship hunting people. Bauer is hoping to contact someone on the bridge, but Peyton tells him that there will be no one to help them because they're on a one-way mission. Peyton tells him that the ship was not meant to collect data or transfer cargo. Its mission is to take 60,000 people to Tannis. Bauer recalls when people on Earth first saw images of Tannis, which was the first Earth-like planet discovered in outer space. Bauer believes that his wife must be on board the ship because there's no way he would leave her behind. Bauer wants to find her, but Peyton argues that it would be easier to look for their wives once they are in control of the ship. Bauer wanders around the security room and finds a non-lethal anti-riot gun. Bauer then tells Peyton to look for a path to the reactor bay so he could reset it. While Peyton looks for a safe route, Bauer feels his hand trembling, so he asks Peyton if he remembers the symptoms of Pandorum. Peyton recalls that the syndrome had caused the Eden mission to fail. An officer had a psychological breakdown after two years on duty. Believing that the flight was cursed, he evacuated the ship, sending 5,000 to their deaths in outer space. Bauer soon reaches a corridor, where he comes across another man hanging from a wire. When he comes closer to investigate, the man suddenly wakes up and flails around. Bauer tells him to relax and be quiet before cutting him down. He finds out that the man, named Shepard, belongs to Team 6. Shepard initially thinks that Bauer is a member of a rescue team, but when Shepard realizes that Bauer just woke up, he ignores the chain of command and tries to take off on his own. He starts covering himself up with grease to disguise his scent from the hunters. 
But before he could walk away, he sees the blue torches moving in their direction. Bauer aims his non-lethal gun at the hunters, but Shepard tells him to run because it won't have an effect on them. Bauer tries to catch up with Shepard, but hunters catch Shepard while he was hiding in a corner. While the hunters are feasting on Shepard, Bauer shoots his weapon at a creature, not realizing that there's a glass between them. Several hunters start chasing after him, so he hides by hanging from the tubes on the ceiling. Hunters soon find him and snag him with a wire, but a man arrives to cut him loose. Bauer can't understand the man's language, but he learns that he's part of the agricultural team when he sees his tattoo. He tells the agriculturalist, named Mon, that he's looking for the reactor, so he tells Mon to stay behind. Back in the communications room, Peyton tries to break the door open with a metal bar. He suddenly hears someone moving through the vents, so he locks it with a wrench. While finding his way to the reactor, Bauer comes across an area full of shipping containers. Nadia suddenly shows up and attacks him. Bauer retaliates, but Nadia manages to throw him out of the container. Nadia follows him down to attack him again, but Mon shows up to defend him. While Mon and Nadia are fighting, Bauer uses his anti-riot gun, causing debris to fall on them. As soon as they take cover, Bauer appeals to both of them to start working as a team instead of fighting each other. Mon volunteers to take Bauer to the reactor, so they go on their way, leaving Nadia behind. Nadia soon follows them and says they're going in the wrong direction. Bauer asks her to show him the way, but she says she doesn't want to go there because no one comes back alive from that area. Nadia agrees to take Bauer after he claims that he is capable of flying and landing the ship. Nadia leads them to a locked door, but she tells them that they have to wait before she could open it. While they're waiting, they hear the growls of hunters getting closer. A power surge hits the ship as the hunters reach the area. The door soon opens, with the three barely escaping from the monstrous creatures. Inside the room, Bauer learns that Nadia is part of the genetic sampling team responsible for gathering the DNA of every plant and animal life on Earth to preserve it on the ship. There used to be five of them guarding the specimens when Nadia woke up several months ago. Now, she's the only one left. Nadia stresses that they've already lost 30% of the genetic samples. She fears that all the specimens in the embryonic chamber will be wiped out if they don't fix the reactor. In the communications room, Peyton is suddenly awakened by a noise coming from the vent, so he climbs up to investigate. He follows the noise and figures out that it's coming from inside the bundle of pipes, so he prepares to hit it when something comes out. However, he is startled when he sees a hand reach out to him. A man calls out for help and tries to inch his way out of the pipes, so Peyton pulls him out. The man tells him that he is Corporal Gallo, and he came from the bridge of the ship. The trio soon reaches the hypersleep chamber, which is also the main hunting ground of the ghoulish creatures. Bauer takes a look inside the pods and finds that most of them are empty. Bauer surmises that his wife could be in one of the pods, but Nadia says family members are kept in another part of the ship. Mon falls behind the two as he listens intently for the arrival of hunters. He doesn't move even when Bauer calls out to him, so they decide to leave him. However, Bauer falls through a broken grate as he tries to follow Nadia. When Nadia goes back for him, she falls through the grate too. They soon discover that they've fallen through the pit where the hunters dump the bones of their victims. The two carefully climb back up when everything goes quiet, but a ghoul notices Bauer and attacks him. The hunter then goes after Nadia while Bauer is still disoriented from the attack. Bauer breaks free from the wires binding him and lunges after the creature. Bauer is thrown across the room, but he manages to strike a blow against the hunter using a pipe. He tries to hit the ghoul again, but the creature blocks it and hits him, sending him crashing against a pod. Mon emerges and slashes the monster in the head. The three take turns to attack the ghoul until Bauer stabs it in the chest. They continue stabbing the hunter to make sure that it's dead. The leader of the hunters soon arrives and starts banging on the floor to call the other creatures. Some of the ghouls run after them while others jump on the fallen creature to feast on it. As the group runs away, a pot opens up and wakes the man inside it. The monsters start attacking the man as soon as he emerges. Bauer tries to come back to help, but Mon drags him away. Peyton checks Gallo's tattoo and learns that he was part of Flight Team 4. He tries to ask more questions, but Gallo becomes irritated, saying he doesn't know anything. Peyton notices the blood smeared across Gallo's body and asks him if it was his. Gallo says that some of it is his own but hints that some belong to his teammates. He asserts that something was wrong with the other crew members, so he had to defend himself. He tells Peyton that he would have done the same thing if he saw them. The three soon come across a large chamber after getting lost on their way to the reactor. They meet a man named Leland, who offers to cook for them. As Leland prepares the food, Bauer asks Nadia if the creatures could have originated from Nadia's lab. Nadia thinks that the hunters were passengers who have mutated because of the accelerators injected into their bloodstream. The enzyme was supposed to help the humans adapt to the environment when they reached Tannis, but the people who were awakened before them adapted to the ship instead. She deduces that the ghouls may have been awake much longer than any surviving crew members. Meanwhile, Peyton grabs a needle gun to sedate Gallo, but he refuses and starts asking Peyton if he'd seen the symptoms of Pandorum firsthand. Gallo stresses that the syndrome is affected by psychological trauma and comes with an emotional trigger effect. Peyton's hand starts shaking, so he tries to hide it from Gallo. Back in the chamber, Leland starts telling the group what happened on the ship with the help of the drawings on the walls. Gallo also reveals to Peyton what transpired at the bridge before Bauer woke up. When Elysium left Earth, three crew members were left in charge of flying the ship. Gallo detected mild symptoms of Pandorum on his commanding officer and his second lieutenant. 
The symptoms, however, became more severe when they received a message from Earth. The transmission bids them farewell, saying, you're all that's left of us. Good luck, God bless, and Godspeed. The crew learns that Earth has been decimated. Elysium scanned the grid for any signs of the planet but couldn't find it. Soon after receiving the message, Gallo killed the CO and his second lieutenant, claiming that they had lost their minds. Instead of going back to hypersleep, Gallo stayed up and woke other passengers. He put some of them on the cargo hold, leaving them with no choice but to scavenge for food and eventually feed on each other. After growing tired of leading the crew, Gallo went back to hypersleep. While he was in hibernation, a different kind of evil was unleashed from the cargo hold. As Leland tells his story, white smoke emanates from the walls, and the group starts to feel lightheaded. They pass out as soon as Leland finishes. Back in the communications room, Peyton's shivers have become much worse and apparent. When Bauer wakes up, he finds himself and his two companions tied upside down in Leland's chamber. Nadia concludes that Leland is planning to eat them. She goes on to antagonize Leland, so he stabs her near her ribs. Bauer tries to convince Leland that he can save the ship, but Leland asserts that Bauer will say anything to survive. Bauer explains that the power surges indicate that the ship is in its final phase before it totally shuts down and kills everyone on board. He says that they have less than an hour to reset the reactor. Leland realizes that the power surges have been getting worse, so he agrees to help them. Bauer contacts Peyton and asks him to check the data from the last power surge to find out how much time they have left. Peyton informs them that they have 47 minutes before the ship shuts down completely. Bauer then tells the lieutenant to find them a safe path to the reactor. The group comes across a little ghoul along the way, so Mon tries to kill it. Nadia stops him and points out that it's just a child. As they argue, the creature runs away and jumps up to an open vent. A full-grown hunter soon emerges and chases them. They hide in a chamber containing the pods of the crew's family. Back in the communications room, Gallo tries to convince Peyton to leave the ship and forget about resetting the power supply. He argues that Bauer couldn't figure out his own name when he woke up 24 hours ago, much less configure a reactor. Bauer soon notices that all the pods are empty. Nadia asks him if he thinks his wife was in one of the pods. Bauer says she's not, recalling that she refused to come with him. He reveals that he decided to enlist to be included in Project Elysium because his wife left him. Seeing the empty capsules, Bauer starts to feel discouraged and refuses to go further. Nadia, however, convinces him that they need to complete the mission and reach Tannis. When he sees the pot of Peyton's wife, he starts to remember something about the lieutenant, but he doesn't disclose it to the group. The group soon reaches the reactor room, but they find that it's full of sleeping hunters. One creature was suddenly jolted awake by the noise when Bauer steps on the footway, but it soon falls back to sleep. Bauer walks further, but the footpath suddenly breaks before he could reach the reactor. Nadia quickly runs toward him to pull him up while Mon holds the bridge. Bauer, however, decides to drop down when he sees Mon struggling to carry the weight of the footpath. Bauer covers himself up with slime and wears dead skin that he found lying around to avoid being detected when he sets foot on the ground where the creatures are sleeping. Meanwhile, Gallo manages to take the needle gun from Peyton and force him to open up a pod. He tells Peyton to enter the code to eject the capsule, but Peyton stops and leaves him locked up in there. While Bauer sneaks his way back up to the console, Leland accidentally drops a flashlight and wakes up the monsters. Mon drops the bridge on them and yells to attract their attention. Bauer soon reaches the reactor and resets it with less than 4 minutes left. As the machine restarts, the discharge blasts away some of the hunters. Mon makes it out of the reactor bay, but he soon meets the chief hunter and fights with him. In the communications room, Peyton tries to open the door to the bridge, but Gallo warns him against going in there. He mutes the audio coming from Gallo's pod, but he still hears his voice somehow. Mon manages to stab the chief hunter with the spear. Meanwhile, Leland sees Bauer and Nadia being chased by ghouls, so he decides to close the door on them. Fortunately, they are able to lock the ghouls out on the other side. The creature continues attacking Mon and bites him on the stomach. As the hunter chews on him, Mon breaks a rod protruding from the creature's suit and stabs it repeatedly until it dies. When he turns around, he sees a young ghoul staring at him. He approaches it to stab it with his knife, but he hesitates. As he slowly puts his weapon down, the child suddenly strikes at him, cutting his throat open. Gallo breaks out of the pod and tries to inject Peyton with a sedative. As they struggle, Peyton sees their tattooed arms start to merge. When the needle pierces his skin, he realizes that he is alone in the room. Leland soon arrives at the bridge, telling Peyton that he helped Bauer to restart the reactor. Peyton stabs Leland with the needle gun in the eye and walks back to the console. Nadia and Bauer soon arrive at the communications room, evading the monsters chasing after them. Bauer heads straight to the bridge to confront Peyton, recalling that he's not really his lieutenant. Peyton reveals that he is Corporal Gallo. When Bauer asks where they are, Peyton opens the window and shows them there is no sign of stars anywhere. Bauer soon starts feeling symptoms of Pandorum while Peyton explains his motivation for sabotaging the mission. He subdues Peyton and starts pulling out his teeth. But Nadia suddenly interrupts him and tells him to look at the window again. They soon discover that they're underwater and they've been in Tannis all along. A console informs them that it has been 923 since the ship flew out of the Earth's atmosphere. Peyton attacks Bauer, who starts hallucinating as the symptoms of Pandorum get worse. Nadia tries to fight Peyton, but the lieutenant overpowers her. Bauer shoots his anti-riot gun at a compartment, thinking that there's a hunter emerging. The blast breaks a piece of the compartment and hits the window, causing it to crack and break open from the water pressure. 
As the water floods the room, Nadia and Bauer run to a pod and get inside. Peyton drowns as the water continues to flow into the ship. Nadia panics as she sees the water level in the pod rising rapidly, but Bauer tells her to hold on. The pod soon takes off and propels its way to the surface. Bauer puts the oxygen mask on Nadia while he holds his breath. Upon reaching the surface, Bauer takes off the oxygen mask and wakes Nadia, telling her that they're safe. Soon, other pods emerge from the water as a result of the ship's emergency evacuation protocol. Bauer and Nadia smile as they watch the other people start waking up to a wondrous new planet. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.